Oh, oh man, you wasted that natural 20. I know, I feel bad about it. Aww. Does this mean well, Daniel needs to recap? That means you can um, recap, or you can pick someone else to recap. Um, who hasn't done- Katie, you haven't done the recap in a while. I haven't done a single recap. Do the recap. <laughs> there you go. Okay. So, last time on Dragon Ball Z, we- I'm sorry, I need to think back a week, my brain's fried. So we managed to defeat the evil turn. swamp hags, well, presumably evil, and we found the eye, it was in a really gross beaver dam thing, and somebody saw us through it uh, via Agnes touching the eye and seeing them. It looks like it works kind of like a, uh, like FaceTiming. <laughs> So both cameras need to be up and on, and so whoever has the other camera covered it up. So we then proceeded to wrap the eye in cloth, stick it along with the hag heads in a pouch, and then went to the tower, talked to the guys at the tower and got skull treasure, went to the inn, got various ale, spent a night, and then went on the road, found an awesome gnome who... Flower enjoyed talking to Gnome Mission, and we got a few awesome things, including uh, walkie-talkie stones. We got a fiddle for Roris. And did we get one other thing, or just the fiddle? I got a ring of no, protection. We got a ring of protection. Yeah. I need to uh, add that to my AC. The two holders of the walkie-talkies right now are Etherius and Krell. Um, however, the stones will be passed around the group as needed. And we still don't know their range, though. Yeah, um... And now we're at the gates of my hometown. Cool. Chelsea. The, the, um... Yeah, if you check your journal, the the, uh, the note about the sending stones, the walkie-talkie rocks, um, should be in there. So it tells you how they work. <laughs> They're like walkie-talkie rocks with really crappy battery life. Okay. okay. Where should I put the ring of protection? All right. So, remember how I told you guys I was going to stop being nice to you? I thought that was with the hags you stopped being nice to us. Oh, yeah, that was part of it. Yeah. Because you almost died. Yes. Um, also, if I recall correctly, no one actually got the hag heads. I actually did say that I grabbed them. The inn. I actually did say that I grabbed them before we left. You did? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna trust you, and if I have to go back to video evidence and it didn't happen... I'm pretty sure I said that I, I grabbed them before we left. I'm going to smite you from Northern California. Wait, what? I don't know. She's gonna be out in California while you're in San Diego. Oh, I'm that's right. Smite you I was really confused. I'm like, you're not in Northern California. <laughs> I'm in Northern California. <laughs> I can't smite you from this far away. That's too far. But if we're absent in California, that I could do. I mean, I'm pretty sure that we would have noticed, like, partially through our travels if we had forgotten the hag's heads. Would you? Yes. I feel like Therius and Agnes were too busy arguing about whether or not they were going to punch the... Not for five days. <laughs> All right. Also, there are three of us. That's three of the people who could notice that we don't have the bounty required on them. I'm like, oh yeah, that thing. Oh, also, Flower found out that her mom probably owns the inn that she worked at. Mm-hmm. Right. Cool. Which, yeah, for the record, five five days on foot from yep. uh, Ever Tower to Everhold. You are currently outside of this coastal city. Um... Looking at it, uh, it's basically just, like, one big wall that goes around the city, um, but kind of ends at the cliff face. Um, because everyone looks back, it is, it's a port city, it's right on the edge. Um, so this, uh, very long, um, curved, uh, weather-beaten wall, um, it's very, very smooth, but not, like, man-made smooth, like, it has been through rain, it has been through... Thought is it, this is like very weathered smooth stone, um, and it kind of extends out to the very edge of this cliff face, where there is after that no more need for a wall because it would drop into the ocean. Um, and there are tons of people um, outside of the gates of the city. Actually, 
um, almost like kind of a shanty town. Uh, but it's a lot of uh, kind of like tents and lean tos and that kind of thing, kind of everything all on top of each other. Um, in a kind of a almost like a tent city, like a semi permanent neighborhood outside of the walls um, of just people who have made it. Um, you there's you guys arrive uh, like late morning. Um, so it looks like everyone in this kind of tent city uh, is wrapping up their stuff for the morning and either people are heading into the city with goods to try and trade or people are just doing business um, out there in the open outside of the city. Uh, I got also people who look a little bit more put together um, with carts um, or on horses who are going into the city proper. I got a so four to punch the sun. A four? A four. Oh, dang. Wow. It's not a good day, guys. Um, the weather, the gloomy weather um, from Tower Town seems to follow you to Everhold. You guys have been traveling pretty close to the coast. Um, it, it got sunny for a little bit when you guys were inland. Um, but this close to the coast, uh, the weather has turned a little San Francisco on you guys. It is chilly. Chilly. Fall is upon you. Flower is in a noticeably good mood. Ocean. What would you like to do? Um, so who was it that we had to turn the bounty into? Uh, you guys have to turn it into the, uh, the captain of the guard in Everhold. Okay. So let's go find the captain of the guard. Yeah, we can ask captain. the guards at the gate. Captain Nelson. There are, in fact, guards up at the gate. Um, before we approach the guards and then before we really get too close to the city, I'm Darius puts his shirt on. <laughs> I guess is this. That I think what? Excellent. Yeah. Oh, that that's an excellent drawing. Yes. Adjust. You got scoop. That's how I spent my afternoon. Put that on the Facebook chat. We can we can have everybody draw their characters. Yes. You as can. soon as I'm done drawing my forty two renderings for Midsummer. Oh boy, honey. Yeah, right. Anyway, so yeah, um, go through the line. Yeah, it's a little city. chilly out. There is a lot of tr bustle going on about you guys. You guys can either head into the city or kind of figure out what's going on. If there's anything to be had uh, in the uh, kind of tent city outside, uh, it's really up to you guys. Do we care? Knock out. Well, I would really yeah. like to get rid of the heads. Yeah. 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 Also, you guys are you guys smell like crap. You guys smell like dirty dead fish. Usual. I would like to get rid of the heads and maybe take a one, shovel. One at a time. Because he was gonna finish, as I was gonna say, but we should get rid of the smelly heads first. All right. So uh, we approach the gate. Fantastic. Um, it doesn't seem like there's any kind of rigorous way for entrance. Uh. The guards urge that there's uh, six guards at the front gate, um, and they don't, they aren't really stopping anybody, they're just kind of like glancing over, kind of like when you check out at Costco, and they're like, okay, yeah, you're good, so. Looking um, at our receipts. But as you guys sure approach, nobody's walking around with a giant knife. Basically, yeah. Um, Awkward. Can I roll for flower knowing where the captain of the guard tower would be? Not yet, because uh, when you guys approach, uh, one of the guards takes note of you, uh, and kind of indicate he's staying next to some of the guards and indicates over you guys, and then approaches you guys. Uh, from as I'm walking up, he says, uh, he points to where says, uh, yeah. Paul, what, what do you have there in that back? Hagheads. Are you here to trade those? Uh, we're actually turning in a bounty. What was the guard bounty? captain's name? We need to go to the captain of the guard and turn them in. Oh, fantastic. And in that case, uh, what was originally a very confused, concerned, and slightly uh, wary look, uh, he will direct you to uh, the captain of the guard, uh, directs you over to um, a tower that is across town in a relatively straight direction. Cool. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, so you guys get inside the town of Everhold uh, without much issue. Uh, you are getting some weird looks because you are a strange party. 
carrying a bag of heads. They're not noticeably oh. heads. But you smell... Yes. Yes, yeah. we do. Um, and you guys have been traveling for five straight days on the road, and you've arrived in a major city. Um, so you guys get into Everhold, and the first thing that you guys notice is that it is immensely colorful, uh, despite the dreary weather. Uh, Penrith, when you were there, it was predominantly brownish Pink. pinks, and, you know, there was the Rosestone District, but other than that, everything was pretty much brown and gray. Um, and anyone who wasn't a human was more or less in, it was in a less off, uh, way in general. Um, in Everhold, it is significantly more colorful. Um, you walk in and the first thing that you see is a very large, um, carved fountain, uh, with several deities, um, and in fact, several other small statuettes that have been added to the base of this fountain. I mean, people have put flowers, they've thrown coins, there are small pictures, there's candles, all kinds of things um, at this big central fountain. This thing is huge. Um, and doesn't seem, if anybody wants to roll a religion check, okay. <laughs> Sorry, my prep for this was not as flush as I'd like it to be, but I know what I'm doing. Can I roll history with advantage because I'm from the city? Um, yeah, you can for this one. This is religion. But Katie, you roll with advantage because you're from here. Twelve. Ouch. Yep. Anybody else get higher than twelve? Uh, Twenty. Natural or unnatural? Natural. My god. Light. My word. Crowds are religious as fuck. Seriously. He knows, he knows all I the things. recognize these statues, apparently. I'm gonna steal them. Alright. How would he steal them? Statues are hard to steal. I'm assuming. I'm just gonna look super attractive while I shove mac and cheese in my face. Hell yeah. Alright, um, so, Daniel, what, or sorry, Krill, um, what you notice is that there were three, originally three central statues, um, and several other much smaller ones have been added on afterwards. Oh my god, Mo, fine, pre-washed, house. Hey, Luke, come here. House. Luke. No problem. No, no, she gets to wash my dishes before I wash them. <laughs> what else is it now for? There are three uh, primary statues that were part of the original uh, construction. Uh, you notice uh, Moradin, who is a Dwarven god of creation. You, hey, I wouldn't have that one. But you didn't roll it. Um, well, I got a five, but Morden is my god. You would recognize Morden, but Crone recognizes a lot more than that. Understood. Um, you notice Erothus, who is the goddess of civilization and invention. And the third one is Avandra, the goddess of change and luck. Sweet. You good? Flower is going to take out a silver piece and throw it into this as well. I, do I know anything else about them, or just that that's what they are? Um... You are just, these are just like the three. What was that? Oh, shush. Uh, these are just like the, you can tell from the way that this fountain is constructed well, that these are the three primary deities that this fountain was built around. Um, but in the hundreds of years since, um, yes, Jen, I can type that in. 
in the hundreds of years since Everhold has been constructed and found and lived in, it has been built on by statuettes and smaller um, symbols of dozens of other gods. Um, okay. so you can basically determine that although these three gods may have at some point been the, the primary gods of the city, it, the religion has since expanded to be something a lot more inclusive. Okay. Yes, I hope General Tip was real fast. I will that information, so I'm gonna look for it. You're like, oh, hey, look at these guys. Uh, I don't think I have a deity. I should probably get a deity. I don't think I have one either. Not 100% necessary. But, um, where did it go? Stop it. Alright, and um, Flower, as you throw a coin into the fountain, can you roll a perception check, please? I'm sorry, me? Yes. Passive to that or just regular? Yeah, just regular. Oh, I need to get my laundry out of the dryer soon. After she tells me what she got. 13. I'm not rolling great. This dice is really, um, So, you toss your coin in there and then you notice there's a really pretty kind of like mosaic under the water. Um, quick breaks. I have to run and get my laundry out of the dryer. Okay. Sorry. Talk to adults. Intermission. All right. Does anyone we want to do anything during this brief intermission? Mm-hmm. I'd like to hear more about Flower's mom before we meet her. Flower's mom. She's great. <laughs> So Go she, on. She Go owns on. the tavern now? Well, Agnes isn't allowed to sleep with her. That's the first rule. I'd like to see that from happening. I think that's the only rule, actually. Um, I feel like you mentioning it now made it more likely to happen. <laughs> it really did, yeah. yeah. Flower would have said that, though. But I don't think Flower's mom is into girls, so we're probably okay. You don't okay. think. I don't see it as a challenge. You don't think. Well, there was a lot of guys in the house in and out when I was younger. How long has it been since you've seen her? Um, uh, ten years. And you basically just left a note one day saying, Bye, Mom, I'm getting a druid. I've been sending her postcards. (laughs) Bye, Mom, I'm gonna go be a druid. I basically left her a note. Um, because I experienced my magic on the coast and I knew I needed to go find it. And I've heard heard of druids because the city is awesome. And so I went to go find a druid. And she never stopped me from anything before. And so I figured I didn't need to ask permission. So I didn't. Uh, But the place she works is awesome. It's basically, it's, it's an inn, but it's like the music performance center of the town. It's where... Mm bands go to play or bards go to play sweet it's more of a concert slash bar thing that and if fun. she owns it that means the owner probably died which is sad he was like a grandpa to me one would well, imagine he, he just got old and left it to her so she, she could go live like with his grandchildren or something My or he died. yeah he doesn't have grandchildren well never mind then <laughs> he is when you knew him but how has he gone for you can't get grandchildren in ten years. Yes, you can. You have children. How we don't have children. Oh well, then they're yeah no. Children are a prerequisite for grandchildren. <laughs> but you can't have ten years. I had children and grandchildren. Two generations. Ten years. Bang. Well, it depends on the race. Species. Yeah. I think it depends more on the species. Well, I mean, 
you know, out of out of character D and D. They're called Which races. Which D and D race reproduces that fast? I don't know. Um. Uh, the, okay. I don't think it's in the core rulebook, but I think it's in like the um, uh, elemental evil compendium, whatever. What are we looking we'll for? Look it up later. <laughs> the herbs, and they like mature in three years. Yeah, you adopt some of them. They have kids, grandchildren. Boom, done. What are we discussing? Um, <laughs> the likelihood of the person who used to own Ma- Rose. Mm-hmm. Rose. Smith? The bar is called the Drunken Minstrel. The person, but the used, person to who used to own the bar, whether or not he's dead or if he just gave the bar to my mom. <laughs> so wait, so your last or name your is... Or mother killed him. Or that. She wouldn't have killed him. Maybe not on purpose. Maybe she was so sad about your grief. That's Cupcake. So wait, is your, your last name Smith, yes? Yeah. So were your, was your family actually Smiths, or is that just, like, a thing? My grandparents didn't like my mom, so I'm not sure. Well, all right. <laughs> all right, I'm sure about Kind of talking about some stuff. They're yeah. not part of the thing where girls stare at it. It's like, hey, guys, here's some religious fun facts. Fun facts. Cool. So let's go to the tower and get rid of the smelly heads. Yeah. And the creepy eye. And the creepy eye. Um, you guys travel through, um, Everhold to, uh, the primary guard barracks, kind of like a headquarters. Um, as you travel through Everhold, you notice that kind of the colorful patchwork feel of that initial fountain, uh, is pretty much the entire feeling of the city. Cool. Um, Everything is very colorful, um, quite noisy, actually, um, and there are all kinds of people. Everything is kind of like a less touristy version of Hate ashbury <laughs> Kind of. Kind of. Um, you know, there are, you know, there will be the stereotypical, um, kind of like, you see a couple of gnomes, like old gnome guys playing chess outside their house or whatever. Um, but whereas in Penrith, um, it was predominantly humans, Everhold is a little bit of everybody. Um, you do see humans, you see um, a handful of elves, you see even like gnomes and halflings. Yeah. You actually see a couple of half-orcs. Um, oh my. Dwarves are relatively common, but they seem to be sitting closer together. Uh, and everyone that you see, um, is just kind of a little bit more obnoxious, for lack of a better word, <laughs> than, um, the citizens of Penrith. Penrith was very much, um, a kind of, like, button-up, like, very much, uh, no, status fun. in society, whereas Everhold, um, it's a lot more flamboyant. I like Everhold. I like it so far. So no, Penrith just... seemed to have an HOA with a stick up its butt. Yeah. But, oh, well, Everhold doesn't. Everhold was just going for it. So as much as you can see. Eventually, you guys kind of weave right through, um, whereas Penrith had distinct districts, Everhold seems to go more on like a block by...